Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this October 14th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. In part two today, we're going to have Fontana and Audrey join us, two of the Miss Wisconsin Rapids teen contestants for the Miss Wisconsin Rapids teen con uh, contest coming up. Looking forward to talking with them. Right now in studio, we have our good friend, Reverend Beth Habhagger, with us. Reverend Beth, it's, uh, Beth, it's always good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, too. And Mike Barnes is with us. Mike, good to see you. Good to see you. They're to here today to talk about the Winter's Farmers market we're going to dive into that looking forward to it and certainly looking forward to having the winter farmers market back uh, but if you don't mind i'd like to rewind for a second you guys wrapped up your community book sale uh this past weekend how did that go it went extremely well um we did not have as many books donated this year as we have in the past so there weren't quite as many to go but we still were able to raise just under twenty five hundred dollars towards scholarships so we were very grateful and thank you to the community who came out to support this those that donated books and if you're interested in donating next year because we got that question a lot as people will have the book bin back out Memorial Day weekend and we'll be collecting throughout the summer. So if you're getting, you know, as you're thinking about Christmas and maybe needing to thin out your bookshelves, get a box, set it aside, and then mark for Moravian Church <laughs> and bring it to, to us next year. As my mother would like to note to everybody, this um, if you get rid of old books, it means you can get new ones. Exactly. Uh, you can replace. So there you go. You get new books. Uh, and, uh, it's uh, as uh, some people are doing some fall cleaning and things. It's a good note, right. Beth. Uh, you know, hey, keep this in mind in the back of your head. You know, had that cardboard box set and ready to go when Memorial Day weekend comes up. Right. And one of the exciting things are the books that we haven't been able to sell, we're finding second lives for. So our religious um, and inspirational section will be going to St. James and Kellner for their mm -hmm. book sale. That's a part of their, I think it's a bazaar coming up later this month. All of the children's books have been boxed up and will be taken over to the food pantry and mm -hmm. will be given away to children who come for that so they will get a second life um so we're also connecting with mary's place and they're going to come over and choose some books mm. to take over for their residents as well mm. that's wonderful to hear and, and uh, you know especially I, I know that you guys have had this for a little while but so much of it is still uh, evolving and developing mm -hmm. so uh you know the next year when we get together to talk about this yeah. i'd love the idea of hearing even more opportunities for these books that may not get sold for them to go somewhere absolutely it's um it, it's such a cool thing and of course all of this is done to help raise funds for Mid-State and, exactly. and scholarships. And our scholarship that was awarded this last year went to a nursing student again. So these non-traditional scholarships are helping people get a second career or a new life in their career. Which is uh, putting into an industry that needs it and deserves it. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly uh, these mm -hmm. individuals may go on to be in our communities to uh, you know do the, use these services yes. and everything. It is a full circle win-win-win kind of situation. And now we're shifting and getting ready to transition our basement from the book sale to the winter market that's coming up. Yeah. Di uh, looking forward to diving into this one. If you guys don't mind, though, I am a little bit of a history nerd. I love to go into the origin stories and the histories of these things. And when it comes to the Winter's Farmer's Market, it's got quite an interesting one. Do we get into the history of this a little bit? Well, the uh, Winter's Farmer's Market was not operating for a number of years before the Wisconsin Rapids Convention Bureau uh, decided to do some testing to see the viability of a, of a winner's market in this area. Uh, you know, people continue to want to, you know, get win farmer's markets kind of things in the winter, but you had to have some place to hold it. You can't just park it out in the parking lot anymore. It's a little bit chilly. Yeah. Yeah. So they did that uh, at the end of the pandemic, uh, near the end of the pandemic. They had some space available to them. Uh, and they did that. It was small, but uh, they saw that it was viable. They could sort of as a demonstration that it would work. They put out the word. Uh, of course, they eventually lost the space because it was going to go back to being used as a business. And so they put out the word uh, to the community. They, they approached several people looking for space and somebody willing and, and interested in running uh, a winter's farmer's market. Uh, we were the ones that said, yeah, uh, it's I. We'll do it, you know. Uh, it's partly as a as a, uh, a fundraiser for the church to, to help keep the doors open. I mean, and to use space that sits unused anyway uh, to, for something good for the community. And uh, so we uh, took it on. Uh, this will be now our third year. It takes a while to grow these things. Uh, people don't readily think of a farmer's market in the winter. So that getting people to come to the farmer's market... Uh, and then not every kind of vendor is available in the winter uh, as, as is available in the summer. You know, we don't have a lot of people with produce in the winter. That's a little bit more difficult. Yeah. 
But we're trying to build something that's fun, a place that people like to come to. Uh, they can meet their friends as well as get some of the locally produced and locally grown items. Uh, you know, things like bakery and in, in the middle of the winter, the chickens are still laying eggs and things like that. So uh, we took it on uh, and uh, we're growing uh, and we're hoping to grow it some more this year to make it even more fun, uh, more interesting to people uh, so that they want to come on Saturday morning. And it's exciting because it's not just the produce <coughs> and egg, it's also vendors. Mm-hmm. So local people who are trying to maybe earn a little extra money mm-hmm. or creative, we've got booths that have sold soap and popcorn and um, all sorts of things there. So, Right, and, and we have, you know, there are vendors that do things like crafts, and they, they tend to be more centered around uh, times when people are interested in buying gifts as mm-hmm. well as other things like that. So we have, you know, we have a variety of vendors, and, and it's our, our goal and our uh, what we're working towards to try to continue to expand the variety of vendors and the number of vendors so that, you know, you come down you sit and see what's cooking. You know, and uh, Mike, to your point about uh, taking time to build these things, uh, we talk about this a lot with uh, individuals who come in with events. We uh, had the the gang from Bluegrass at the Lake uh, in early bo- in those days before, mm-hmm. and they were just building it and everything. You see what that is now. Um, Dove's Nest is another great one where they joined us right before that. They even had a building. They even had a house yet uh, were joining us, and you see where that has grown. Uh, this community supports these kind of things, and when they find something they like, they keep coming back to it. You mentioned uh, the growing this that you know the the type of vendor that's out there. Get, uh, growing the information to the consumer, it's just as important to get that information out there through vendors and the possible of yes. that. And certainly encourage people to spread the word about this event, uh, not only for uh, the, our our consumers out there in our community, but anybody that could be a possible vendor, because it it's gives a unique opportunity with a winter's farmer market, mm-hmm. where um, uh, you, you in some ways you might have less vendors opportunities, and at the same time might have more with some of the crafting that you mentioned there and everything um these farmers markets whether they're winter summer whatever season they are they are a huge part of our our society now because they support such a backbone of our communities Mm -hmm. such a backbone of our state whether it's ag industry or the uh crafting industry or anything like that well it's a wonderful way for the community to get to get together and at the moravian church we really want to be a seen as part of the community and we love to have our doors open and welcome people to come not just check us out but these other events that we're able to offer so that you can see and meet your neighbors because it's a wonderful safe space to do that well and it's you guys stepping up too uh, I, I think that that's noteworthy, and it's coming from uh, me just uh, looking at it from a third perspective and everything, whether it's this or it's the community book sale or something like that, things that, if I can be blunt, we might not have otherwise. They could have gone away. Uh, we still have them because you guys stepped up, because the church stepped up. And and not for nothing, too, there's not a lot of places that have that kind of space. So even taking that and saying, hey, well, we got all this space, Why, we, we, and raising your hand and being a part of this. Not a lot of people will do that. A lot of Some people just kept their hand down. Uh, I, I think it's noteworthy that you guys stepped up on this one, and the community has supported that, too, and, and shown that. The Winters Farmers Markets have been successful in the couple of years you guys have done this, from what I've heard and seen. And that wouldn't have happened without Mike. Mike has really found a passion for this uh, outreach from our congregation. So thank you, Mike, for coordinating all of this for us. Certainly. Do you guys take any, and I, uh, and I, it's, uh, I don't know if it's noteworthy or not, but uh, I know that the Summer's Market, the Winter's Farmer's Market, uh, two separate uh, people running these things and everything. Correct. But do you take any influence from each other? I, I know talking with, uh, we had them in last week, and they're saying that they really enjoy what you guys do and really support and mm-hmm. wanted to get behind it. We're uh, looking forward to the details and everything about it. Yeah, certainly the uh, uh, Wood County runs the, far- the Summer mm-hmm. Farmer's Market, and uh, I, I work with her. In fact, I just talked to her last week. Uh, they said they have some new vendors this year, so I'm going to they're going to send them over to me. And cool. you know, and of course, they they will put on their site my postings and vice versa. The um, uh, we try to uh, you know find new ideas. There's some mm-hmm. of the things they do that I'm looking at. If I can figure out how to make them work at our market, we'll you know we'll certainly incorporate them. That uh, that help makes it easier and makes it better. 
Yeah, it, we're, we're so much stronger together, you know, with mm-hmm. these things. And uh, whether, you know, uh, Beth and I, we've gotten together to talk about grace before mm-hmm. and, and the work there with churches coming together. Yes. Uh, Terry John, CEO of the United Way, and I have talked a lot about nonprofits working together mm-hmm. in this community. Um, these things stand out. And I think they are a great example to the rest of the states, the rest of the Midwest, of what happens when we work together and how much stronger we are when we work together. Absolutely. What are the details? Do we have the uh, uh, opening night? Do we have uh, the details for this yet? Yeah, uh, the opening day is going to be October 26th, hey. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, and we will run uh, all the way through till December 21. Hmm. Uh, there's actually going to be uh, sort of a themed sessions this year, uh, the fall session, you know, where, where we focus on uh, things of fall, you hmm. know, uh, hmm. Could be pumpkins, could be, you know, pumpkin pies, whatever. Yeah. Uh, all I sh- heard was pumpkin pie. That's all I heard. <laughs> then there's going to be a short holiday session, and we will have an, uh, an event uh, at the holiday session. Uh, I talked to someone, we're going to have Santa at the market again. Cool. Uh, that was very popular. Uh, some of the craft vendors who, who focus in on some of the holidays, they like to come to that, those times when you're we're around mm-hmm. the holiday that they would have specific crafts for. Uh, so then we'll take a little break uh, after the 21st of December, and uh, we'll pick up again on January 18th after people's kind of gotten, gotten over the hangover of Christmas <laughs> mm-hmm. and New Year's, um, and we'll start again. So January 18th, and, and so we'll have a, a, a longer, what, what I call a winter session that will run mm-hmm. from January 18th to March 29th. Um, <laughs> at that point, we're going to transition into a spring session at our spring session last year we experimented with and we're going to continue to experiment with uh with the changing weather we've been seeing some earlier times that it's been warm out Mm. so during that session you know if it's a little warmer we'll we'll, the vendors will actually set up in the parking lot they like Mm. that Mm. sort of sort of getting ready for the summer season what Mm -hmm. it's like to be out out in the summer season so Mm. uh so that's that's kind of how we how we're uh doing this so is uh, the uh, way of uh, making payments, um, and people might be familiar or used to doing the way that you do in the summer, at a, a summer farmer's market, is there any differences with that as far as uh, making payments with vendors and buying, purchasing items and such? Uh, as vendor? far as as far as the customers uh, buying stuff from the vendors, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, hey, bring cash or uh, hey, they have the cards now. Every yeah. vendor is probably different, I'm sure, but yeah. something to keep in mind for the audience out there, right? Well, so uh, I have not established it yet, but I'm going to try to figure out that that market bucks. Uh, cool. You know, the cool. the summer market runs a thing where you buy from them uh, tokens that can mm-hmm. be then cashed in with the yeah. the vendors i'm going to see if we can do something like that and those things you know a lot of details involve that oh yeah but we're working on that you know uh some of the programs that are at the winter our summer market are would would not be available with it for yeah. from us because they're they're focused on buying uh produce locally grown produce and and uh, with with certain programs so those those wouldn't necessarily be viable but you know we are investigating those those things very cool uh, are there <clears throat> any other differences between uh, that people should keep in mind when you're is approaching a summer market to a winter farmer's market? Certainly, we touched on the different vendors and some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the location being inside, that's something else to keep in mind. But otherwise, you know, pretty much a, a, a farmer's market, what you would expect. Right, right. So, you know, it's going to be cash, and, and many of the vendors do take credit cards on their own. And, uh, you know, so that's that's available. They're able to run their machines inside. Um so, yeah. Yeah. You heard the dates <clears throat> and some of the details from Mike here, but uh, we uh, we also want to note as well that, <clears throat> you know, anything can happen. And certainly uh, life has its uh, curveballs that it throws to us and everything, Beth. So there is a possibility of closings to keep in mind with this, too. Right. And we try to connect with the, the local stations and, and uh, TV. If it's too the weather's too bad, we will cancel the market. And we will also put that out on our Facebook page. And mm-hmm. that Facebook page is WR Winter Farmers Market. And you will be all live on there or make sure that there's a message there to let people know that we will not be happening if the weather is that bad. If uh, people aren't familiar with uh, the kind of stomping grounds over there, as far as parking and that, how would, uh, where, how would that work? Well, we are right beside the old Tribune <laughs> building. Um, so there is parking on both sides of Gog- Goggins. We have parking at the church itself. Um, in fact, we have nice new <laughs> blacktop. <laughs> so it is not nearly as treacherous 
for the winter this winter as it has been in the past. And we do have permission to use the parking lot across Goggins um, behind the old Tribune building. So it's easy to get to us. We do have an elevator. So the basement is accessible for all abilities and a wonderful new ramp to be able to get in. So it should not be an issue to be able to get into the building and to get down to where the market is. I brought it up just so we could talk about the new parking lot. <laughs> just, uh, just so we could mention that. Uh, shout out to the workers over there and everybody yes. that worked on that one. Um, and we will certainly keep you up to date. If there are any closings, we'll be letting you know right here at this station. You can keep, uh, you can be uh, sure of that. Mm-hmm. When we talk about vendors, we've touched on this a little bit, you all. Um, the type of vendors that can uh, take advantage of something like this and really use this space. Um, is it really a one come one all? You know, is, or is there a type of vendor that uh, would work really well for something like this? If you're listening out there, we want you to be a part of it. Well, certainly. We, we don't want flea markets, so people that are coming to sell their garage sale items necessarily. But, you know, things that have been produced uh, locally, preferably locally, but not exclusively. We, we do have what we co- what's called direct sale vendors, people who sell things that they're reselling as, as uh, manufacturer's reps, so to speak. Uh, but we uh, do want to focus on locally grown, locally produced uh, items. So, for instance, uh, one of our one of our uh, more consistent vendors has been Wisconsin Waterfall Soaps. Uh, Jeff is, uh, makes his own soaps down in his basements, and he's grown quite a bit. He's a wide variety of soaps. Uh, we have a baker, uh, Too Easy Bakery. Mm-hmm. bakery. Uh, Elizabeth uh, bakes her stuff at mm-hmm. the Presbyterian Church in, in Arpen there. Uh, she's quite popular. Uh, she's one of the big pushers of this because she needs a place to sell her goods in the winter. Mm-hmm. You know, she runs several tables in the summer, but, you know, she needs somewhere to sell her goods to the customers that want to see her. Mm-hmm. We have some new bakers that will be coming into the market, uh, some sourdough baking people uh, and things like that. So, um, you know, sort of that kind of thing. Then there's people that make crafts, sewn crafts. Uh, uh, there's people that sew things, make bowl koozies and, and hot pad holders. Glasses, glasses, cups and things like that, yes. uh, jewelry. Um, so there's there's a variety of crafts. Yeah. Uh and these, these are all produced by people here in town. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, a great place to go Christmas shopping. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and the place maybe yeah. to go Christmas Instead shopping. Instead of checking out Etsy, check out the Winter Market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, 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 a lot of the purpose of Vetsy was to buy local and support local. Here you go. You can yep. do it in person. You can yep. actually just you know cut out the middleman. No shipping and handling on that. <laughs> That's right. It'll be right there. You mm-hmm. take it home with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and certainly, as, as I, I, I say this, I, I really want to make sure to hit home, buying local, supporting local. Right. This is a popular phrase, and it's a phrase we say all the time, uh, whether it's on the air here or just in person in our day-to-day lives. But it also takes action. Uh, it's not. It's a great phrase. Takes a little action behind it as well. Uh, we encourage you to uh, go to the, every one of these markets because there is no reruns. Uh, every market's <laughs> going to be true. a little bit different. Uh, be sure to check them out and certainly uh, feedback. Uh, the the gang over here uh, running this really love hearing from the community and really love want making running this for the community. So want to hear feedback from you guys when it comes to these things and certainly vendors. All you vendors out there, we want all of you. Want to hear from all of you, Mike. If uh, a vendor out there is listening and would like to be a part of this event. Uh, how can they reach you? Well, they can reach me at the WR Winters Market at gmail.com. And they can also, or they can phone me, uh, 715-697-9762. Or they can uh, leave a, a post, or I mean a, a, a contact on Facebook, or WR Winters Farmers Market on Facebook. Um, they can leave a message, and I'll get back to them. Uh, we're certainly interested in all vendors. Uh, we're looking to expand all the time. We we have not filled up our space. We got room. Uh, the more vendors we have, the more customers we can bring in. The more customers we can bring in, the better it works for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well said. And thank you for the time, Mike. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for everything you're doing for oh, the community. Thank Appreciate you for you. having us. Yeah. Yeah. Beth, uh, before we let you go, uh, one, uh, congratulations uh, on the uh, casting in White Christmas. Thank Get you. your tickets for that, everybody, at wrctheater.org. Uh, we'll meet you there at the at the, at the the studio. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a really good mm-hmm. show. Congratulations to you Thank and the you. cast. <clears throat> and I did want to remind the audience that you have uh, great services that you do every Sunday, and you put them out there for everybody on YouTube. Uh, we wanted do. to tell people how they can get that. Yeah, all you need to do is uh, type in Wisconsin Rapids Moravian Church, and you'll find our YouTube channel, and we... Uh, live stream when we're having service and then we keep it posted under the live tab so you can go back and see some of our previous services as well and then we also try to post that onto our facebook or our 
website, usually mm-hmm. on a Tuesday morning. I uh, encourage you to check that out, everybody, <clears throat> and subscribe to the page. Keep up to date on the great work that they are doing over there. Really do appreciate it. And Beth, if people have follow-up queries about to you, how can they reach you? Uh, you can call the church office at 715-423-0180. Um, you can email a Moravian at wctc.com. Net, or you can contact me directly, wrmcpastor at gmail.com. Encourage you to do that, everybody. And you can find out more as well at the website, wrmoravian.org, wrmoravian.org. Be sure to follow them on social media as well. The uh, Winter's Farmer's Market social media page, uh, Facebook page is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another great way to reach out to the gang here. Thank you both so much for the time. Appreciate you. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have more Midday Magazine coming up for you right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR. We are locally grown radio.